media is, is seeking to do is add to that knowledge, not challenge it, but to add, add to that, to augment that knowledge by saying there are practical virtues of life that can be expressed. For example, respect. I said respect is the base chakra. There is a practical description of respect. I'm aware of this moment and value what I see. That's respect. Honesty. Very easy to say. Honesty is my word, is my bond. That's the simplest way to describe honesty. As a virtue and as a way to filter my life, to determine how I will choose at each moment in life to live. Consistency. I'm committed to doing the best I can. Enthusiasm. I'm inspired this moment to do the best I can. I'm inspired. Compassion. I feel your emotions. Cheerfulness. I love life and wisdom. I love myself. So, Eukadia is about unlocking that aspect of living with the knowledge of meditation because knowing everything and and reaching a point of enlightenment by sitting down, squatting and meditating is lovely and it's a great way of stress relief but it really matters when you're dealing with difficult people (laughs) or parking your car on a Saturday for shopping. That's That's where... Chakra alignment and, and virtue really mean something. And I, and I always say to people, virtue is nothing if not tested. Uh, I wish it wasn't, but that's how it works. Virtue is nothing if not tested. So Eukadia is very much about trying to make it practical, field, uh, beyond just simply the nice, happy, colourful, meditative, kind of mysterious areas that is chakra and that is, you know, Kundalini and and and, uh, and uh, Kabbalah. Okay. Yes, very good. All right, thank you, Frank. Um, next question we have: Is there a technique to access DNA knowledge in the Eukadian model? Can you repeat that for us? Is there a technique to access DNA knowledge in the Eukadian model? In other words. Can someone get on Eukadia and be able to access DNA knowledge through any of the... um, Yep. If you read read the journey of UCA from start to end, if you then read the journey of self, if you then read after you've read those, even if you read the other ones first, you read those, then you read the canons of divine law and natural law and then read the uh, patents that are on Eukadia, it will physically change the structure of your brain. It will physically change the structure of your brain. And in that, it will also change the function of the knowledge that is in you. And the validations that you seek will come from the DNA changing its vibration and its rotation and you will find that knowledge is unlocked within you that you never knew was there that will validate what is coming in. It is an interaction between you and the knowledge. Now, some people might find that scary, but remember when they put the kind of propaganda they do on TV and the fluoride in the water, what do you think they've been trying to do? They haven't been trying to educate you. They haven't been trying to assist you. And they certainly have been trying to encourage you to be your full potential. They've been trying to physically alter your state of mind. What do you think Ritalin is? Physically altering your state of mind. Eukadia changes your state of mind. So if, if you want to unlock your DNA and the knowledge containing your DNA, then you need to allow your brain, your body to align itself to be more attuned to that. And unfortunately, knowledge is a weapon and a lot of the knowledge that we've taught is used as image training. I I said to someone the other day, the way to view it is, in their world, they want every one of us to be an agent. Remember the Matrix film? And in fact, we could say, because we're image trained, there are 
memory points in our psyche that can be pressed at any point by their master propagandists and it can cause us to absolutely shut down our learning. That means that every one of us potentially is an agent. What we say is, well, that's true, but every one of us is also Neo. I agree there. Yes. Yeah. Are you? Uh, is there is there an order that you would suggest um, reading those in a certain order, or is that just a suggestion of, of doing some reading? I know it's in the natural law and uh, divine law on the one heaven. Do you have an order of what you suggest in reading those? I would suggest that yeah, you would read the Journey of UCA. Then you Which would read on, the. Gen- which on ukadia.com, yeah. Yeah, ukadia.com. There you go. Okay. Yeah. The journey of UCA, then the journey of self. Then I would read, um, I'd scan. I wouldn't read them. I'd scan the patents. And I would read then the canons of law. And that's what I would do when I get to that. And I would also then encourage people to read the covenant, of course. But by that stage, you'll have gone through some pretty important changes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for clarifying that and going through that order. There was a couple questions regarding that uh, order there. Uh, there was a question regarding uh, is there a way to tell how many members are in the Eukadia Society? Yeah, at the last count, we've got something in the realm of about um, 850 or 900 registrations that have been done um, through the uh, index, but it's it's just under a thousand. But the, the number of visits uh, across the sites sit uh, at one heaven sits on an average of about 900 visits a day and uh, I, I think the university I'll have to ask the university what that is but um, the averages across the Acadian sites something are like uh, just under I think it's just under about 80,000 I have to check in terms of pages. I was going to. I honestly don't know at this stage what the total is, so I'm not going to sort of put a, a, a figure up that I can't verify. But there is a substantial number of visits per day across the Acadian websites, and Acadia is is doing I think about 700 or 800 a day. So we could we could do better marketing. We could do more marketing, but at this stage. I'm more concerned, and I hope people understand this too, I'm more concerned about the foundations and getting that right than about it being, you know, a a cast of thousands. Um, if, if, If this is valuable, if this is helpful, then that will come. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, next question, um, the uh, chat group here. Just as a reminder for those of you that are on the phones, if you do have a question, star eight, we'll put you in the question and answer queue. Uh, <clears throat> can you talk about why the complexity is needed uh, and can't we all just get along with the very simple rules like the golden rule? That's an excellent question. If you can show me how the world can live by the golden rule, can live in virtue, that people will be self-responsible and respectful, then I would gladly, gladly stop work now. (laughs) I would be overjoyed. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm tired. I'm very, very tired. Um, So yes, that would be wonderful. But I think you know the answer, who asked that question, you know the answer that it is not a simple world. And if we want to talk about complexity too, because I know people say, well, you know, there's a lot there. They did a study about 10 years ago, and this figure's been bandied around, and I can't tell you whether this is a fully valid figure. But in the US, if you compare canons as rules or maxims or as laws 
then in the US alone, they estimated to there to be in excess of, in excess of 60 million unique laws. 60 million laws. How on earth can any society live with 60 million laws? I'm not talking about acts or, or you know, legislation. I'm talking about the individual rules. Now, that is the present system, okay? And the present system has a full financial system and financial regulation. It has uh, canons. It has dictionaries. It has philosophies like psychology, which underpins why they, a psych evaluation can come in and tell you with absolute confidence to the court that you are of unsound mind and incompetent, even though they can't tell you where the mind is. So let's kind of get real here when we're trying to compare complexity. I wish, pray and hope that people can live one day, that they can live with the simplicity of self-responsibility and knowledge in themselves and the golden rule. The golden rule is through everything. All are equal. I said it before, all are equal. So I've already said the golden rule tonight repeatedly. But the reality is that societies on a planet of at least 7 billion people today is a complex system. It is complex. So just believing that it can get by but not doing the hard yards on an energy code, an education code, a health code to fix these things is not really addressing the problem, really. And I wish it was true, because it would save a lot of time, but the reality is that we're dealing with a complex system. But I would certainly suggest we're nowhere near the absurdity of the system that has produced, as I said, apparently 10 years ago, 60 million laws in the US alone. That's quite an amazing number, no wonder. There's such chaos in the courts. They don't even know their own laws and rules. How, how could anyone know 60 million laws? <laughs> um, and it is quality. It's not quantity what we're doing. It's absolutely yeah. quality. Yeah. And that's why it's taken time. I mean, if it was a quantity issue, I wouldn't bother about discussing the things tonight. I'd just whack it off and keep going because, you know, it's painful. It's tiring. Um, it's frustrating. But... You know, they've had 1,260 years since 751, since the Roman cult or the concept of Rome being a kingdom of ideas was brought to life by the Franks, the Pippins, when they invaded Rome. 1,260 years to this year they've been in power. That's a long time to do their magic. You know, if I'm behind, I'm behind by days or weeks. I'm not behind by 1,260 years. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, uh, just this is a little bit different kind of question. Um, will you ever do a journey of Australian history and corruption uh, in your on the Australia on on yeah. the history of Australia? Yes. That's a good question. I'd like to do that. Uh, I'd like to have a look at that. I mean, there's my Black grandfather at one time was the Attorney General for Australia. He was, he was certainly in the, at the cusp of when the Constitution was formed in Australia. I'd love to, to get into a bit more of the history because I know Australia has a lot of similarities. Well, there are a lot of similarities, it turns out, with Australia, with Canada, even with America, where, as we now know, not all is as it seems. So I'd very much like to go back in and, and see how that all works. But uh, I'll see how I go with what I've got to do this year first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're trying to get finished up here uh, with everything else you have going on. Well, we have a question on the phone here. V, v should be there. V, are you there? Let me try that. Are you there, V? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm oh, here. I, I, I wasn't sure. 
I wasn't sure what I had to push to get back get online. 